hospital, I think one of the most unique you know, aspects that uh, I'm sure everybody will see is how we have integrated you know, nature so seamlessly into the hospital ground. You know, how we open up the hospital so such that it's accessible to the public and how we have integrated the issue on in as part of the hospital. So it's almost like you know, they borrow the scenery, you know, the Chinese concept way of architecture. So within the hospital, you can look at the pond, and from pond, you can look at the hospital. And how this is seamlessly integrated as well. And I see how the nature is playing a very important part in creating the healing environment for everybody using the hospital, whether it's for the patients, the caregivers, for the staff, and for anybody who comes in. It has drawn a lot of people from the community, like students, who actually like to come here to study in the midst of the greenery. And also the fact that we have many school groups who have brought students here to visit this place because you think that it's a very good outdoor learning lab. Um, in addition, I find that um, what actually makes this design stand out and it's actually timeless is the orientation of the building was um, faultlessly planned in a sense that um, the patients actually get the win as what we are feeling now <laughs> and also that the naturally ventilated wards which we have in Singapore are not facing east-west direction directly so the patients actually are able to um, have a very good environment to recover while um, not getting um, direct heat from the sun every day. And in addition to that, I also feel that um, the design by architect led by Jerry, um, the building is not regular. It looks very much like um, a shape if you look from the sky downwards and the irregular shape of the building actually has facilitated the movement of the air through the building quite uh, effectively meaning that all the corridors that are naturally ventilated do get the breeze. I remember the brief asked for 50% of all the spaces to be naturally, naturally ventilated. Yes. Uh, we didn't achieve that <laughs> okay, because of the, the basic function of the hospital, that a lot of the spaces need to be either mechanically ventilated or air conditioned, you know, such as the operating theatre, ICUs, so that can be helpful. Mm. But that's why I think we free up all the public spaces to be naturally ventilated. Yes, that's right. I think right. that worked very well. That's right. To save energy, yes. and also such, such that people can have a very much more direct contact. Yeah. Yes. Another aspect which I thought the um, design um, had helped in our green, green and sustainable uh, drive is the use of the Yishun pond water. Uh, what we did was that we managed to collaborate with the public utilities board UB to ask them for permission to draw water from the pond which is just next to the hospital. And they were very kind. Uh, they actually worked out an agreement to sell us the Yishun pond water not for drinking purposes, but for irrigating the plants in the landscape areas at a much reduced cost as compared to portable water costs. So I think we are very grateful to UB for helping us because um, we just did not have the kind of space to build a large tank in the basement or on the rooftop to contain so much water to irrigate the plants in the hospital. So the issue pot is our tank? Yes. It's an open tank and the water comes um, naturally from the rain. Um, every time that it rains, the Yishun Pond gets fill up and we are able to draw the water very easily through um, submissible pumps and a network of underground pipe work. But of course the water is filtered to a certain extent so that the plants actually are not harmed by toxic substances that could have flowed into the Yishun Pond. There is another aspect which is the mechanical and electrical engineering design where we used uh, solar photovoltaic cells to power some of the air conditioning units as well as the corridor lightings. So these solar photovoltaic um, panels are actually located on the rooftop of 
this block that we are sitting on right now and it has been able to generate sufficient electricity to ensure that we don't need to turn, turn on um, the power from the grid to run this equipment. And the solar panel actually also acts as a shade okay, for those who are working underneath it because um, on the rooftop of this building, beside where the, the mechanical electrical equipment are located, we have uh, lots of green areas where we use it for rooftop farming. And the volunteers who are helping us on this rooftop farming are able to use the solar photovoltaic panels as a shelter, whether it's during very hot days or when it's raining. So it has actually uh, given more benefits. Than so I think what generally, more broadly speaking, people associate wellness to say psychological, physical well-being. And I think as a concept, okay, it comes in many different terminology. People used to, you know, say, oh, no good indoor environment, you know, and things like that to associate that with wellness. But I think to me, wellness it permeates at every level. level okay, every aspect of our lives. Yeah. You know, even when say wellness is at home or at a workplace right. or in public spaces. Right. Okay, and I see a huge opportunity to see how we can integrate this design as concept in every aspect. I think Nobody can deny that we want to be in an environment whereby we feel, you know, feel good, mm. especially for patients. That's right. You know, so I think for hospitals, it's especially important how we create that environment whereby they can heal faster, they feel more relaxed, you know, the stress level yeah. comes down. I still remember Mr. Lea always say, how do you design for me a hospital? That when I enter the hospital, your blood pressure comes down. You know, so I thought right. that was an amazing challenge. Right. So what would you think about this idea? Yeah. I think it's, it's uh, very amazing that um, you and your team have done such a fantastic job to make our hospital a very, very healing environment where the patients actually enjoy walking around the basement one courtyard and even sometimes uh, accompanied by nurses and caregivers, they do come up to this rooftop farm mm. you know, to look at um, the trees and the fruits that are being planted. Um, I think um, they also appreciate the fact that we have worked together with um, other government agencies like PUB, URA, HDB, um, as well as MPARCs to create a health promoting park mm. around Yishun Pond where uh, one kilometre around the pond it's actually um, turned into a uh, walking or jogging track. track. So patients who actually would like to take an evening leisurely stroll, they can easily do it while enjoying the, calm, the calming waters and also the, the floating wetlands and the greenery around the pond. So in a, in a way, you know, we have uh, managed to um, entice or motivate the patients to leave their beds come out from the wards <laughs> and enjoy, you know, the greenery because by walking, you know, by doing um, some exercises around these areas, they actually are beginning to show signs that they're going back to normal life mm. and they are able to fully enjoy the environment and they will look forward to going back to a normal routine uh, before they were admitted to I think it's also about down. creating a positive distraction yes. whenever when they are in such yes, a stressful correct. place. Yeah. But I mean, maybe for patients, it's uh, normally give, taken as a given to say that, oh, of course, you must provide a healing environment That's right. for patients. That's right. But I think it's especially important also for staff. That's right. Especially now you're talking about such a stressful workplace, you know, high right. turnover rate. Right. It's also very important to create an environment where they want to, correct. to work correct. in, you know, yes. whereby they feel relaxed yes. in the workplace yeah. as well. Yeah. So how does the staff you know, in KDPH feel about the facility? Yeah. I, I have spoken to quite a number of staff and most of our staff actually appreciate the fact that there are many outdoor areas for them you know, to have discussion, short meetings mm. and even to take their lunch and uh, dinner if they're working late. And they actually feel that the, the calm and green environment to bring down you know, their stress level. And uh, for some of them, they actually had been working in a very enclosed uh, office environment. They felt that this is a big change. 
meaning that uh, they do um, get to enjoy the sight, scent, and and um, smell, smell of yeah. um, the different plants, and they they do like it because it's um, it's not just about having meeting or eating meals. It's about enjoying the green environment to make them feel less stressful, and that will actually motivate them to work even harder. Yeah, that reminds me of the survey that Dr. Nermal from NUS did. Yes. Around yes. the post occupancy survey, why interview, right. you know, staff, patients, visitors from two right. hospitals. And I was actually very shocked, you know, to see the results that came in, you know, to the right. fact that, I mean, besides the four point that, you know, people appreciate, you know, the amount of green yes. and water elements yes. in the hospital, right. but the fact that they are actually even willing to pay more to have more of these facilities in the hospital, actually, yes. that, that to me was a very shocking revelation. That's right. I felt that one of the ways to cut down on the maintenance cost is to engage volunteers, volunteers who are very passionate about landscaping, about greenery. So we have managed to get uh, residents staying around uh, this area and in the northern region of Singapore to come and help with our gardening, with our um, pruning, with our um, fertilizing of the soil. And we even also engage our staff to have gardening day um, regularly so that they will feel that they it is their responsibility to maintain um, the greenery of this hospital and to keep it in tip-top condition. Well, so actually that becomes part of the community and engagement yes. as well. Right? Yes, correct. I remember the previous uh, CEO, Mr. Yak, yeah, they always say, you know, how do we turn shit into fertilizer? Right. I think that is really the ethos behind how we look at every challenge, right? How right. do we turn the challenge into something that is actually becoming much more beneficial That's right. at the end of the day? Yes. Right. I thought that was um, really a big learning point for yes. us as well. Correct. Um, but one of the areas that I think we uh, did very well on is that we managed to harvest enough vegetables and fruits to give to our patients once a week. And any excess, we actually do sell them uh, uh, in a way to people in the community so that um, the funds that we get from can be used to buy fertilizer and um, anything that is needed to continue to enhance the landscape and the rooftop farm. Yeah, I just bought some vegetables the other day from the market. But you know, yeah, I think it's amazing that it's 100% organic. Right, right. And I thought the whole, the whole story of how the compost is used as fertilizer for vegetables and all these vegetables, you know, in the end, end up on the plates of the patients. You know, That's I right. thought that is an amazing story to help right. to anybody, to right. say, especially when Singapore is so dependent, you know, Correct. on everything. That's right. I think we need to be a bit more aware and to promote the idea of sustainability in every aspect, especially yes. in terms of food sustainability. Yes. So I thought Today Quad really took the lead you know, to show people how it can be done. Yes. So can you imagine if we activate all the rooftops in all our HDBs, uh, rooftop farms? Right. That would be amazing. That's right. And why not? Yes. You know, why not? Yeah, you can do it on a scale just for the hospital. And if everybody does it in Singapore, I think we will go a long way for yeah. in terms of food sustainability. Yes, I agree. In fact, we have actually um, invited our friends and colleagues, uh, our um, partners from various government agencies like HDB, uh, like um, um, even LTA and even um, those who are actually building private buildings to come and take a look at our rooftop farms and they were amazed that we could make very good use of the rooftop instead of leaving it to waste and more than having a farm the soil and the trees actually do reduce the heat being generated through the structural slab into the air conditioned spaces below. So I think uh, it has many benefits of having this rooftop farm and we are able to share with our partners and with our friends so that the message is being cascaded down to other new projects.